What is going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We have reached the end of yet another comic book week, which means, of course, it's time for a last call. That's right. These are our picks for comic books that are hitting Final Order Cutoff, or FOC, this coming Monday night. A little bit sooner if you're DC Comics. But it's been a heck of a week. It's been a great week for us on this YouTube yes. channel. Had a fantastic interview. Had a great bolo show. Had a great three up, three down. But my favorite would have to be that interview with Ross Ritchie. Oh, yeah. Great, great interview. Great time. Um, it's always fun to talk to uh, Ross. He has kind of become like a comic mentor for us, uh, a guy with a lot of experience in the game. Um, and I definitely think there's so much information. Uh, I know sometimes that hour long video can scare some people off, but so much stuff, whether you're a collector, speculator, investor, or you just want to know uh, what it's like behind the scenes in the business. Uh, Ross tells it all in that interview. Right. And if you don't want to watch the hour long video, fear not, we are cutting that up yes. into smaller digestible chunks. Or like we always say, we have the audio podcast version so you can listen to it on there as well. Whether you're going to commute, whether you're just letting your kids run around in the house and you just want to listen to it or even on that treadmill or like me, I got on that Peloton. But either way, we're going to get into our picks for FOC, starting with crossover number two. Yeah, Brian. So this may be a light week and a book like this is a prime example of one you really just don't want to overlook. Uh, a lot of books on this list uh, are issue number twos or books that maybe um, wouldn't garner that big time attention. But we've seen this before that when indie series really kind of pop off and explode, it's those second, third, fourth issues that have those drop off and print runs that we start they often to see. Ent introduce new characters in those. Absolutely, yes. Um, they start a drop off and print run. A lot of times they introduce new characters. It's something that's been overlooked for a long time in the hobby. And, you know, really not since I think Walking Dead have we seen one where it really kind of became extremely relevant to the secondary market. But one of these properties, whether it's crossover, certainly one with an opportunity, but whether it's crossover or it's, uh, you know, something's killing Out, the children. Outcast did something similar, just Outcast. True. Didn't, didn't did, yeah. But one of them is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to be successful to the level where people start having to grab those later. The boys, to an extent, is doing that right now. So um, this is something to pay attention to. Also pay attention to those variants um, for because we've seen with series like bitter root or um ice cream man that some of those cover b variants uh for the later issues start to really pick up so don't overlook this one um with indie series i think you gotta start going beyond issue number one these days yeah especially when you got someone like donny kate's writing it i know there was mixed reviews on crossover number one i actually enjoyed it and like i said this is i'd like to see like i said before i'd like to see an image series where it goes past issue 100 again but who knows if this will be that or not it was announced on Twitter. Donnie did clarify that it is an ongoing. So hopefully, yes, we can get some, some longevity with the series. We might not have much on FOC this week, but we got another one from Image, and this is one that we're both excited about, and it's Homesick Pilots number one. Yeah, now we've talked for a while, and you're looking at really like, what are investable indie properties? Um, we have talked about the fact that it seems as though uh, Hollywood studios, streaming services, they're looking for these kind of like young stories, whether it's teen stars or um, child stars and specifically in groups. And we really, we've called it the stranger things effect is everybody's looking for that next stranger things. Um, and here we got a, a, a book that kind of plays on that theory where you know the solicitation talks about how every group of teenage friends has that one time in their shared lives that defines them um but for the kids at heart of image comics upcoming series homesick pilots uh that time centers around a haunted house and an evil mind of its own and so we've talked about horror being hot we talk about these youth driven stories image comics as a publisher is on an absolute roll. I mean, we've kind of gotten back into the era of 2014, 2015, where these number ones are just like uber relevant. Regardless, you got to pay yeah, attention. Peter Panzerfaust. Yeah. You know, and, and that only really like the, the, the spec OGs would know what we're talking about there, but there was like a period where it seemed like every image book popped on the secondary market. And we've been on a streak um, the last several months. So 
this is one to pay attention to. This is one to be on the lookout for. Um, this is a series that I think will have reader buzz, and I definitely think could have that kind of Hollywood attention. Yeah, it reminds me of the animated movie Monster House a little bit, but either way, another great one to look forward to. Shifted from Image over to Marvel Comics, but we got Donny Cates again, and we get that King in Black number two. Yeah, and again, another example of an issue number two um, that's going to be probably overlooked. Um, we certainly don't know yet the the events of King in Black, and we know only that the scope is going to be enormous. But I think that some people are desensitized to that. We talked about Don Kate's salesmanship, Marvel salesmanship. Um, we've been told for a long time this is going to be a major defining storyline, and certainly um, with Empire um, and kind of X of Swords maybe o- underwhelming some of the, the hope of marvel readership there's a lot of faith now being placed in uh king and black and certainly null and everything related to null has been on fire so there's something to pay attention to because you're going to get a million uh store variants for issue number one you will still see store variants for issue number two but that will drop off tremendously so you'll start to see some of those incentive print run numbers drop off uh, and you never know what's going to happen. Could we get first appearances, major revelations? You just don't know. But on top of that, even if it's just a reader book, go ahead and lock in those pre-orders. If for nothing else, it helps out your local comic shop and you can save some money by getting those pre-orders in uh, and using that pre-order discount. One great place you can do that is from blackcapecomics.com. We'll offer that 15% discount on all pre-orders on every book we're talking about on the list. Yeah, I mean, you bring up a good point. I mean, but seems like publishers whether it's dc or marvel every event they say it's going to have lasting effects on on the imprint but the fool don't get fooled again so i think some people are cautious but i will say this absolute carnage was fantastic absolutely love that one but another good reason why we're bringing these up for foc this foc these are actually coming out like right before christmas so get those orders in now pre-order them that way you can spend that money later on the christmas gifts that you forgot to get Shifting over for DC, and it's also important to remember that DC's FOC is before Monday night, so make sure you're paying attention to that. But we get that Batman 105, which is kind of going to lead us into the end of this arc, right? Yeah, it is. And this has been uh, a well-received arc of the Ghostmaker storyline, uh, and the Ghostmaker character has been very popular. Uh, we certainly see movement on the secondary market for the first appearance, as well as those design variants. Um, this is something to pay attention to. This is going to have the resolution, and it'll really tell us a lot whether or not this is a character um, that is somebody who's going to be sticking around, somebody we're going to be seeing, somebody that's going to be investable for the future, or whether or not this is kind of a quick burn and turn character like we've seen similar to the designer. So, Big important key issue, one to pay attention to. Certainly Batman is also a plug and play reader buzz pick at this point as James Tynion is absolutely killing it on the series. Right, and just like the rest of them leading up to it, this does have one of those one in 25 design variants for it. I don't have the art to show right here, but do want to make you aware of that. Moving back over to IDW, and this is one of our plug and plays on this channel because we love talking about it and we continue to read it, but we got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 112. Yeah, Brian, you're right. This has been an absolute plug and play pick for us. And this issue, though, is one to definitely be paying attention to as it is the end of the current story arc. And it seems like a lot of things are going to come to a head in Mutant Town. Um, and we've got the, the Turtles and Splinter Clan on one side. We've got the Mutanimals on the other. And this issue marks the return of Casey Jones. And we've been talking, whenever we talk about our turtle coverage, the fact that his absence post-death of Splinter and Jenica turning into a turtle has been a kind of a major background storyline as it really has affected Jenica and his return, which we knew would be inevitable. Um, it, it brings up as many questions as it does answers, because now how is this going to impact the characters and, and where is he going to stand with everything and how are things going to be between him and Jenica? So this is a big issue, but here's the other thing to remember. There's a lot of buzz out there for issue 113, that cover for cover A, the that looks like the return of the future Splinter Clan, the return of adult Lita, adult uh, Zana, adult Zinc, adult Mushroom, um, adult Pepperoni, all of that. And 
everybody is anticipating and excited about that issue. It's popped a lot of back issues from issue number 101 to issue 102 to issue 105. 102 is a big sleeper right now with the three weasel first appearance being by far less purchased than the other two issues. But we've talked about this before. Brian has pointed this out. He's been really astute with this. Um, but we've, we've seen when things get kind of teased in a solicitation and an issue, we've seen it sometimes occur at the end of the issue before. Um, certainly, we can't guarantee that. We can't um, say that that's going to be the case. But with the, the Casey Jones return being kind of advertised in the solicit, we know that there's a good chance there could be a cliffhanger at the end, especially leading into the next arc. And that's something to pay attention to, because if we get the reemergence of the adult Lita um, and all the other adult splinter clans as well as kind of like the old man turtles um i definitely think that that is going to be something the market will be buzzing about so that's going to lead us to the part of the show where we do that indie showcase and that's right the indie showcase is brought to you by black cape comics jack told you a little bit about them earlier blackcapecomics.com you can pre-order all the books we talked about here but they are just like us big fans of indie comics so that's why the indie showcase is brought to you by black cape comics and the book we're going to talk about this week is sumerian frost giant's daughter number one i like this one's got a lot of covers for it kind of reminds me i was talking to jack kind of reminds me of like a dynamite book but all the covers have fantastic cover art it's got a regular cover by peach momoko but it's also got an incentive variant by peach right absolutely and here is the thing um that's what's really going to be the driving force for this. And certainly it's easy to sit back and say, well, you know what, Jack, Brian, I've seen Peach Romoko everywhere. Um, I, I, I've seen this everywhere. I've seen. Uh, um, I, okay. I've seen, it's got a Conan cover swipe too. Right. I've seen enough Peach Momoko. I'm done. But here's the thing. This is from a Blaze comics. And if you look at like the, the print run numbers that a Blaze Comics does, and you look at the popularity of Peach Moko and the fact that she is about to be exclusive to Marvel, where that's going to be the only place you're going to get her books, and you know the print runs of Marvel books. Certainly, you know what to expect from the print runs of Peach Momoko books, especially those open order Marvel variants. Those will be enormous. Uh, this could be a great opportunity to get a lower printed book. And certainly, you mentioned there's also the incentive available. And for those purists, this is written by Robert E. Howard. Um, so it, it, this is an original original story kind of brought uncensored. Um, so that's kind of something, if you're a fan of like all the Conan books in that kind of universe, uh, that's the, this may be a book of note, regardless of the Peach Momoko art. But I think the Peach Momoko art was going to get people's attention. But this is easily a book that could be overlooked on this order sheet. Um, and certainly there's uh, even other Peach Momoko uh, art on this a final order cutoff as Doctor Who also features Peach Momoko. But this one coming from a Blaze Comics being a number one, being in the Conan universe, which has been so popular, um, I, I think this one has a good chance to be a winner. Yeah, and if you are a fan of Conan, you're a fan of that universe, it's not we didn't talk about it on the show, but Marvel does have Hit and FOC, a, a king size Conan number one that goes back to those original stories and even has a prequel to the original Conan stories. So that's worth checking out as well if you're a fan of Conan in that universe. But we just had the one for the new showcase. Again, that's from blackcapecomics.com. You guys can pre-order all those books from there and check out their fantastic exclusives for a lot of independent comics. And we also like to talk about some of those exclusive prints that they offer, right? Absolutely. Yeah, they do do a great job with the prints. They've got a great team of in-house artists, as well as working with some of the most kind of creative um, abstract artists that we've seen. They've, they've really done a great job creating those exclusives as well as those amazing art prints. So if you haven't had a chance yet to check out blackcapecomics.com. Uh, great, great, great local comic shop. And it could be yours if you don't have one. Exactly. Small business, three of them grinding it out so we love supporting them as well absolutely but we get to that point in the show where we like to talk about and say that it, this is just as important all those smaller as we're reaching the end of the year but we got those additional printings right that's right and you know these have been as hot as anything else on the list and while we have a small list of additional printings this week I think all of the books on this list are very crucial. So we start off with Savage Dragon, which has been incredibly popular. And certainly some of these controversial or um, nostalgic covers have been uh, really popular with people. So we've got Savage Dragon returning with 252, the third print, and 253, the second print. So those are definitely two books from Image Comics to be on the lookout for. 
And from Boom Studios, we have Power Rangers number one, the second print. But we don't just have one cover. We have two. We have a Dan Mora second print, as well as a Franny connecting cover variant to the second print. And that connecting cover will, of course, connect with Mighty Morphin number one uh, late printing. So that is something to be on the lookout for. I really like that Franny connecting set. So there it is, guys. Those are our picks for comic books that are hitting final order cutoff this Monday. Unless you're DC, got to make sure I put that caveat in there. But with that being said, this is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.